Hi guys, Matt Collins here from Beausoleil. Today I want to talk to you about rig tubing and how to make a, a really easy job of threading it. So a lot of you guys out there are going to be fishing waters um, which stipulate uh, that you need to use rig tubing but you'll be used to using half a metre, maybe three quarters of a metre, something like that. And if I was fishing a, a venue where I had to cast a very long way and there weren't any snags and the fish weren't very big then sure I'd be using you know, those kind of lengths as well. So today I'm going to show you how to thread uh, a metre of tubing and we need a metre of tubing to fish this lake safely because we've got some very large fish and the bottom's very rocky and I really need that last meter to be very well protected and that's what the rig tubing is doing. Now it doesn't matter whether you're fishing from 50 centimeters of rig tubing or a meter of rig tubing or even two meters of rig tubing. The techniques I'm going to show you are exactly the same and it'll just make the job of threading tubing so much easier. So let's just run through the equipment. Very very sharp pair of scissors. So step one is this angle cut. And I'm using a pair of scissors with micro serrations which grip the line. It stops the line kicking and sliding away. So that's the really clean cut. The next bit is really important as well. You have to stretch the line. If you don't stretch the line, it's going to be kinked. It's going to be curly. So just wrap it neatly around your fingers for the length that you need and give it a darn good stretch. This should, you know, should hurt a bit, should cut into your fingers a bit, but really does the line a lot of good to give it a good stretch. Then it's going to hang beautifully limp just like that. Uh, let's look at the next most important set. I've seen guys trying to thread tubing, kind of holding it horizontally. That's, that's going to be really hard work. You need to use gravity, all right? So nice and vertical like that, yeah? And let gravity help you out. And next we're going to thread it and what you want is little movements. You guide the line through your fingers, your left hand holding the tubing stays perfectly still. Short little movements. You just keep it going, just raise the tubing up, get it off the ground, so it helps straighten the tubing and we can see when it comes through. Keep those movements going and that's it. I'll show you an extra little tip here. There's nothing more frustrating. You've threaded the tubing and then puff of wind takes the line away and it pulls it out of the tubing. So uh, all you need to do to stop that ever happening to you again, do a little overhand knot in the main line and then the tubing can't fall off. Now you can do this for when you're putting rods away if you're fishing in line leads like I do for storage and uh, or when, if you have to cut the line you know for ha handling a fish cut the line little overhand knot job done it stops you ever having to re-thread re -thread the tubing again. So that's how to make an easy job of threading tubing now let's have a look at what can go wrong. So you might you might find this funny, but I've seen guys, yeah, you know, they're in the habit of fighting the line. I can't even do it because it's so tough this line. But they bite the line and um, then try and thread it. You're going to have so much ag. It's going to be really really hard work to do. But I've seen it. I've seen it done. If you're a line biter and you're fishing with tubing my advice stop biting your line another common mistake is kinks in the line if you if you've got line that looks like this then threading it's going to be really hard work okay so yeah you need to straighten those kinks out or just or just cut them off so if i show you what it looks like when you're trying to thread tubing with kinks in yeah i'll get to there and I, i'm done i just can't no, i can get that first one through but it's making it really hard work Something else that's going to cause you a great deal of ag when it comes to threading tubing and that's trying to re-thread old tubing. That's tubing that you fished with. As soon as you fish with it, you get bits of silt, bits of grit stuck up that tube 
and trying to thread main line back through it again is really really difficult so once you've used the tubing you know I, I don't I don't take it off the off the main line I keep it on the main line uh, with that little uh, overhand knot that I showed you so uh, you know you can reuse it for multiple multiple fishing sessions but uh, if you find yourself in this situation where you're trying to re-thread tubing that is not already on a piece of main line and that's been used you're going to find it really hard best best just to start with a new piece of tubing so the only make of rig tubing that I've ever found that is actually re-threadable is made by Rigmarole. It's the Rigmarole Freefall um, Big Ball 1mm Ball Tubing, not the Micro Ball one, the 1mm Ball. Um, I don't use it anymore personally because it doesn't play nice with uh, uh, inline lead, so I have to drill out the actual inline lead to make the uh, ball bigger and it's just it's too much faff and it's a bit it's a bit dangerous really so uh, but if you're a lead clip user and you find yourself you know wanting to reuse uh, rig tubing then the stuff's very good it is very expensive the rigmarole the rigmarole tubing is very easy to thread it threads beautifully actually so if you're still struggling to thread tubing even with the techniques that i've shown you then this stuff is an absolute dream. I can use much, much bigger movements. Threads so fast. It's only available in one meter pre-cut lengths. And there are, we are with through. Still going to do the trick with the little overhand knot there to stop it falling off. It is very, very. It hangs very, very limp. It's beautiful stuff, but uh, goes over contours really nicely. Um, very heavy. It's lovely, but it, it is it is expensive. So to complete this video, I wanted to show you some, uh, some, some do's and don'ts. So I've set this up like I would uh, all my in, inline leads. So we've got a size 8 ring swivel, we've got a uh, silicon tail rubber, we've got the end of the piece of main line there after I've tied the knot, just left long, so it forms a bit of an indicator. And uh, if you want more information on that, then uh, see the link at the end of this video. And uh, then it's very important that the inline lead can pass safely over the end of the rig tubing okay so I'm going to show you now some absolute don'ts so I've set this up in a, uh, in, a in a dangerous manner basically so uh, I'll show you why it's dangerous uh, if I pull the tubing over there I put a split shot on the main line. Now, you know, people want to pin the line down. I can put a split shot there. That's not going to be uh, dangerous, right? Well, look what happens. It stops the inline lead. You've now basically formed a, a, a tether rig or a death rig. And uh, in the event of a main line failure, the lead's going to stay attached to the fish and uh, poses a great deal of risk to the safety of the carp. So I want to show you another dangerous rig and uh, that bit's that bit's fine normal but we've got a uh, swivel here and especially on an inline lead the swivel prevents the lead from um, from safely ejecting so one of the problems with using tubing is that once tubing's been used it's really difficult to thread uh, so what we want to do is basically not change the tubing. Now, you know, a very common thing, you catch a fish and you want to separate the rod from the fish to make it easier to handle the fish. Now, if you've got a quick clink, then that's fine. You can just kind of unclip the rig in the water, take the rod away and then deal with the fish. But uh, I use a lot of loop-to-loop -loop connections, so I actually want to cut the main line. So how do we cut the main line without the tubing falling off? Here's a little trick. So here's a close-up view of my standard setup. I'll just use a loop-to-loop -loop connection. Uh, 
so I don't need a quick link basically I don't need one of those silicon sleeves either and uh, yeah, the lead just popped over the silicon tube there so how do we go about you know separating the the main line from this rig without actually having to cut the rig so you have to imagine that uh, you know this is the tubing going down into uh, uh, into the net with the fish on and what we want to do is we want to slide that tubing up out of the way so we reach down and we find the lead we slide the lead up we then hold the tube in and we just pop the tube in and slide that up out of the way then we want to take our scissors and just cut the main line above the rig tubing like that. So we leave the tail rubber and the tagger main line and the swivel and the rig, that's in the net with the fish and that's going to be perfectly uh, perfectly safe. Then we want to take our bit of main line here, we're just going to tie a little overhand knot like that. And we can slide the lead off, stick that in the out of the way and then that's attached to our rod and that little knot there is going to prevent the rig tubing sliding off so that's basically ready to uh, reattach to a swivel for the next rig so that simple trick means that you can reuse rig tubing time and time again fish after fish and basically you never have to change it so you never have to re-thread it so a number of years ago someone recommended well why don't I use a pole threader in order to use tubing well I bought a few pole threaders and you know supposedly they make the job of threading rig tubing easier but to be honest I don't get on with them uh, I found that uh, certain tubings are incompatible um, and uh, it doesn't work so well let's have a go now at using a pole threader and I'll show you the problems that I get. So this is a piece of the dark matter that I used earlier uh, which was no problem to thread using the right technique. Let's have a go with the pole threader now and I think the diameter of the dark matter internal is only 0.75 of a mil and it's really hard to thread this pole threader through. You know, I've got it through it's really really tough I mean I've got it down to I've got it about 30 centimeters something like that and I'm really struggling already so uh, yeah a pole threader with a right with the right tube in might might be great but it certainly doesn't work with dark matter so let's have a look at some suppler wider bore tubing so this is the Nash diffusion camo uh, no spook and uh, the I haven't really used this product much and to be honest I was a bit disappointed when it came out of the packet because it was uh, it, it was crushed and uh, it was impossible to get any line down it the only thing you could actually thread it with was it was a pole threader which is why I bought the pole threader but uh, let's have a go at now and you can already see that the pole threader flies down that but it's only as quick as the, um, the main line going through the dark matter earlier that should be through by now so we can see the uh, see the diamond eye at the uh, at the end there and get a bit of main line here all we do pass the main line through the diamond eye and it goes but you have to be very careful I'm stretching the I can feel the rig tubing stretching in my hands and I can only pull it a bit at a time but there we go it is through and it does work with the right tubing but it's just slower it's quicker to do it properly with uh, you know the, the right technique Now there is potentially a scenario where a pole tip threader would be very useful and that's if you wanted to use rig tubing with, um, uh, with a braided main line but 
I mean, to be honest, if a venue stipulates uh, rig tubing only, then braid's probably going to be banned anyway. So, you know, I use mono when, when I should. I use braid when I should. You know, I've never had to use rig tubing with um with with braid i just use a uh, yeah a normal leadless uh, leadless leader so uh but yeah you know, if you happen to need to fish rig tubing with braided mainline then a pole tip threader and you know some large ball tubing like the uh nash diffusion no spook is a, is a good combination so there we go that's how easy it is to thread one meter of rig tubing. Now you don't always need to fish with one meter of rig tubing. You know, uh, if you're fishing long range, you want to fish a shorter length because it, it's less wind resistance and stuff. But uh, if you're fishing uh, a snaggy or rocky uh, uh, venue like we have here at Beausoleil with uh, with some very big fish in them, then uh, our rules state a meter of tubing. It protects the fish, protects your line, and uh, you know, it, it's a very safe way of fishing. So uh, meter of rig tubing, you know, it's very easy to thread if you use the right techniques. So I really hope that you find those uh, tips useful and uh, all the best with your fishing.